this is automatically deploying a three node CoreOS cluster with VMware. CoreOS has had OVA files for VMware for a while, but setting them up has always been a challenge. You had to interrupt the startup, pass in the auto login boot parameter, change the core user password, reboot the machine again, SSH in, remount the file system as read write, and paste in a custom built cloud config file. You didn't have access to the private IPv4 variable that makes managing CoreOS easier. VMware has had a feature for a long time that lets you pass key value pairs through the hypervisor into the guest operating system. Recently, CoreOS has added support for pulling these key value pairs from VMware, a feature they call the VMware backdoor, and that's what I'll be using. Taking a look at my lab, I've got a single ESX5 host and the vCenter server appliance 5.1. And take a look at hosts and clusters. There's my host. And if I look at VMs and templates, see there are no VMs and just this one template, CoreOS Alpha. This is the alpha channel of the CoreOS VMware image. I imported it and converted the virtual machine to a template. I'll be doing all of this with PowerShell. In the script, I'm declaring that I need three machines, CoreOS 0 through 2, these are the machine-specific settings, in this case the IP addresses. And these are the settings that are common to all of the machines, the gateway DNS. Okay, so I'm going to run the script. And it kicks off the three clones asynchronously. You can see them running here. And the script goes into a wait loop right here waiting for those tasks to finish. While well, that runs, I'll take a look at a few other things. This is the cloud config that I'm passing into each of the machines. It's pretty standard with my discovery URL, the key for my user on an Ubuntu box I use to support this setup, and I can pass in the private IPv4 as a variable. Taking a look at the discovery URL, you can see there are no machines registered with it yet. So it'll take just a couple of minutes for these clones to finish. Okay, the clones are finished. I've got my three virtual machines here. And take a quick look at the script. What it's actually doing is pulling the VMX file. That's the VMware config file for the guest down from the VMware data store. Adding all of the guest info for CoreOS to the file, uploading it and restarting the VM. You can actually take a look at one. This is the file that VMware uses. All of these settings are what are set in the GUI or through the API. And this is what I added, or what the PowerShell script added. All of these settings, interface 0, IP 0 address, for example. And there it is with guest info out in front of it. You need to put guest info in front of all of these. That's part of the VMware RPC API. It can only access properties that start with guest info. Now the script is still running. It's still switching on VMs. The other thing it does is go into a wait loop for the VMware tools to start. Um, CoreOS now includes open VM tools, so it's nice, I can actually wait for the VM to start before starting the next one. So if we look at the virtual machines list, you can actually see the IP address for the machine being reported back to VMware. So right now this machine's booting and we're just waiting for the tools to communicate back to vCenter so that the script will move on to the next one. There it goes. And then the other thing to look at, it might be premature. Oh no, here we go. So here's two of the machines already 
that have come up and joined the cluster. And since I know this one's up, I can also use SSH Great. See if fleet control is up. We'll see if fleet is up. And there it is. So one of the things in my cloud config is just this line to write out YAML as a menace. I'm not a fan. And the file is test. And there it is. Let's say I don't like that. Let's say I want to change it to YAML is wonderful. To reapply this cloud config now, or any other changes I want to make, I can just rerun the script. This time it's already detected that the machines exist, and it's going to take them down one at a time. Rebuild the VMX file and push it back to the data store. As well that runs, one other thing to point out is that the config data gets base64 encoded. So that's why there's this string of random nonsense here. If it gets to be too long, you can also gzip it and then base64 the gzip data and pass that along. But this config file is small enough that it's not really an issue. So CoreOS 0 is back. There we go. And if I connect back into the box, there we go. Now YAML is wonderful. And that's what's great about the way this is working versus previous ways of hosting CoreOS on VMware. By using the VMware RPC API, you get all the same benefits you would get by running OpenStack without the hassle of running OpenStack. If you're running hundreds of CoreOS boxes, and maybe it's worth it, but if you only need a three or a five node cluster, then standing up all of the moving pieces of OpenStack just to push a YAML file is kind of a pain. So that's all there is to it automatically building and managing a CoreOS cluster using VMware.